the 1961 American Western called The Comancheros was directed by Michael Curtis and it was based on the 1952 novel that had the same name that was written by Paul Wellman. The film starred John Wayne and Stuart Whitman. It had a really good supporting cast. You see Lee Marvin in it for just a short time, but he's absolutely a shining point in the film. His interaction with John Wayne is just on cue. You also see Bruce Cabot and a very slender Jack Elam. Patrick Wayne is in the film and also Edgar Buchanan from Petticoat Junction. The film is set in Texas during the mid-19th century, which was a very troubled time prior to its statehood. When the Comanches were on the warpath and renegade white men known as Comancheros were aiding the Indians with fighting equipment. The movie relates the story of a Texas Ranger, played by John Wayne, and his gambler prisoner, played by Stuart Whitman, who team up together to detect and destroy the renegade society. Wayne is obviously really comfortable in a role that's tailor-made for him. He plays an easygoing, square-shooting, tight-lipped, but watch out when I'm mad kind of personality. Lee Marvin makes a vivid impression in his brief but colorful role as a half-scalped, vile-tempered Comanchero agent. Now, the stuntmen in this movie are just phenomenal. I don't think I've seen a movie in a long time that has harder falls, bigger leaps, and more troublesome maneuvers than occur during the raid and battle sequences. This movie is worth watching just for this. Because of Lee Marvin's performance as Tully Crow in this film, John Wayne recommended Marvin to John Ford as the villain of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance in 1962. This bit part really got Lee Marvin's career on a roll. On the very first day of filming, John Wayne ended up reprimanding the third assistant director, Tom Mankiewicz, for wearing a John F. Kennedy button. He ended up telling him, I'd take that button off if I were you. We don't advertise socialist on my set. If you'll remember, John Wayne had campaigned for Richard Nixon in 1960 during the presidential election and he blamed Kennedy for losing the Bay of Pigs invasion. He didn't like the Kennedys at all. Paul Wellman wrote the novel with Cary Grant in mind as the character Paul Regret that was played by Stuart Whitman. However, by the time the film was made, Grant was just too old for that part, and he would have never taken second billing to John Wayne anyway. And the other weird thing about this character is that Paul Regret was the lead in the novel, not the John Wayne character. And they completely switched that around and amplified John Wayne's role for the film version. When Captain Jake Cutter, played by John Wayne, and you got to realize in this movie, John Wayne goes by two names. He goes by Jake Cutter and by McBain. And if you'll notice, when he signs in to the hotel registry, you'll see the name William H. Clothier. And that's the name of the director of photography for the film. If you continue to look closely, you'll also see Jack Burns' name there. And he's the assistant director. So they slipped in a few little Easter eggs during the filming. Now Wayne's character is also called Big Jake. And that's a real familiar name to John Wayne because he played Jacob McCandles in the movie Big Jake in 1971. Now, they used members of the Navajo tribe to shoot this film, and they took them and transported them from the Monument Valley area to the shooting location near Moab, Utah. They also spoke their lines in Navajo instead of Comanche. The Sternwheeler steamboat, the John B. Dickey, depicted as being docked at Galveston, Texas, is actually a prop boat that was on loan from Universal. And it's probably set in a large pond on the Universal backlot. Its real name was called the Enterprise, and it can be seen in many other films, such as The Mississippi Gambler from 1953, The Far Country, 
from 1954 and four for Texas in 1963. It was completely destroyed in a large fire on the Universal lot in 1967. Now, this novel was originally bought to have George Stevens to direct it, and he wanted to do this after he finished the filming of Giant in 1956. However, he then became interested in making The Diary of Anne Frank in 1959, and he ended up selling the film rights to 20th Century Fox for $300,000. Claire Huffaker was signed by the studio to adapt it for the producer Charles Brackett with Gary Cooper to star in it. And after all that changed, and they decided not to use Cooper, in early 1961, Douglas Hayes was announced as writer and director, and John Wayne and Charlton Heston were announced as the stars of the film. But then Heston dropped out, and he was then replaced by Tom Tryon. Then the casting changed again when Hayes dropped out, and he was replaced by Michael Curtis. Parts of the film were shot in Professor Valley, Dead Horse Point, King's Bottom, Onion Creek, and Haver Ranch in Utah. The Texas Rangers started out as a force of 60 men, whose numbers were increasing to 150 during the Texas War for Independence. Once Texas became a state in 1845, the Rangers were disbanded, as their role was to have been assumed by the U.S. Army. In 1850, they were reconstituted as a force of 100 to patrol and protect an area of 268,000 square miles, divided into six companies of just over a dozen men each. With the hundreds of miles between posts, they never abandoned their patrol areas to ride together in a virtual army as depicted in this film. Their officially specified uniform included a long duster coat and identification fashioned from a Mexican peso coin. And one little tidbit you'll notice, in Patrick Wayne's role, he wears an identical neckerchief that John Wayne ended up wearing in Hondo in 1953. His son plays a great role in this film. He plays Tobe and is an integral part in the story. Now, Paul Regret is constantly escaping John Wayne and constantly getting recaptured, but eventually he doesn't have to be on the run anymore, and he's completely released because the unit of Texas Rangers lies and says that he was a member of their organization. And this was all done because of his acts of valor and previous skirmishes with the Indians. Their story was that Regret had been working undercover as a ranger to spy on the Comanchero's supply line. And this cleared his name, and they end up swearing him in as a Texas ranger. After finding one of the Comanchero's suppliers and killing him in self-defense, Cutter and Regret take over his delivery wagon and infiltrate the Comanchero community in the bottom of the valley. Regret is hooked on the daughter of the Comanchero leader, and her name is Pilar. He met her on that paddle boat initially and could never forget about her. After Cutter and the other Texas Rangers defeat the Comanches and the Comancheros, Regret and his new girlfriend, Pilar, leave together for Mexico, and Jake rides off into the sunset to rejoin the Ranger Company. Now, during much of the shooting, the director... Michael Curtis was seriously ill. He died shortly after the film was released. On the days when he couldn't direct or was too ill to work, John Wayne took over the direction of the film. And when the film was completed, he told the studio that he didn't want any credit as co-director. And he insisted that Curtis's name appear alone as the director of the film. This just goes to show what type of an individual John Wayne was. Hats off to you, John Wayne. Not only were you a hero on the screen, you lived it in your daily life. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.